This paper is entitled The Holy Quran in the Gnanic Literature An Initial Exploration. This paper seeks to demonstrate the underlying teachings of the Holy Quran in the Gnanic literature. Therefore, it is essential, first of all, to describe the nature of the Quran as well as that of the Gnans in order to understand better the relationship between them. The Holy Quran is the divine revelation to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and unites the entire Muslim ummah. In its own words in Surah 26 verses 192 to 195, it is a revelation of the Lord of the worlds which the true spirit Jibrail has brought down upon your, that is, the Prophet Muhammad's heart, that you may be of the warners in plain Arabic speech. We further learn from the Quran in Surah 56, verses 77 to 80, that this is indeed a noble Quran in the Kitab e Maknun or the hidden book which none touches except the purified, a revelation from the Lord of the worlds. Kitab-e Maknun is also described as a Kitab-e Munir, or the luminous book, which is a source of the books of all the previous messengers of God, about whom God says, And we never sent a messenger save with the language of his people or nation that he might make the message clear for them. Surah 14, verse 4. These scriptural references establish that the prophets, through their spiritual elevation, which in the case of Prophet Muhammad is described as the Mi'raj, have access to the Kitab-e-Munir or the Kitab-e-Maknun, and then they express their spiritual experiences in the language of their people. The transition from the luminous spiritual dimension to people's material language requires that such sublime experiences be couched in the language of parables and allegories. Thus, the prophets have to teach the wisdom of the book, technically known as the Ta'wil or esoteric interpretation. In Shia Imam Ismaili Islam, this function of giving the ta'wil or inner meaning of the allegories and parables of the Quran is done by the rasikun fil ilm, that is, those who are firmly grounded in knowledge. When Imam al-Baqir sallallahu alayhi was asked the identity of the rasikun fil ilm, mentioned in Surah 3, Ayah 7, he replied, The foremost of them is God's messenger, for God taught him all that was revealed to him of the Tanzil and the Ta'wil, and he knew the Ta'wil of everything that was revealed to him, with no exception. After him, the legatees, that is, his successors, the Imams, are the Rasikun who know its ta'wil in its entirety. To turn now to the Ginans, the focus of this conference, in Christopher Shackle and Zawair Moore's words, the word Ginan itself is quite clearly a local phonetic realization of the familiar Sanskrit word nana, knowledge. In the hymns themselves, the term ginan is, in fact, most frequently used in the basic sense of the higher knowledge to which Ismaili teachings give access. Thus, ginans are a corpus of esoteric literature, the main aim of which is to teach ma'rifat or divine recognition. This assumes great significance in the context of the fact that as Batiniyun or esotericists, Ismailis throughout their history have emphasized the esoteric or Batini aspect of their faith. 
harking back to the well-known saying of Hazrat Maulana Ali sallallahu alaihi man arafa nafsahu faqad arafa rabbahu the one who recognizes his or her soul recognizes his or her lord at this juncture a few words on the ismaili da'wat may be appropriate during the course of its history under the guidance of the divinely designated hereditary ismaili imams there has been a system of da'wa which at times was openly active and at other times secretly active depending on the historical context the main purpose of this da'wat or system of conversion was to bring people into the fold of the ismaili tariqa through recognizing the imam of the time in the light of the holy quran thus this da'wat was highly sensitive to the cultural and intellectual environment in which it took place for instance in the fatimid times the da'is used the language of neoplatonism to convey their beliefs whereas in the persian period ismaili terminology uses sufi terms such as peer shah and jamaat khana but which have a specifically ismaili meaning similarly in the indian subcontinent dawat the peers and sayyids used the languages cultures and the religious mythology of the hindus to convert them to the ismaili tariqa a very apt reference to this is in the ginan eji dei gur ke vacha heje thir na rehna where peer tajuddin says varan chhatri sur betali bakhya berda kane na sune ho jire bhai o brother though we have composed ginans in 36 musical modes and 42 dialects the deaf will not listen this method of proselytization continued right up to the early times of the 48th imam maulana sultan muhammad shah salwatullah alayhi who later on brought conversion to an end the ismaili system of da'wat spanning more than 13 centuries in which the essence of the quran was expressed in diverse languages and different modes created a rich heritage of diversity within the unity of the faith of islam the peers and sayyids mostly of persian origin were extremely well versed not only in the tanzil or zahir of the quran but also in its ta'wil or batin inspired by love and devotion for the imam and confident of the truth of the ismaili faith they traveled on foot or animals across high mountains and vast deserts to reach the various parts of india to bring the dawat e haq or invitation to the truth which is the original name of the ismaili dawat dawat e haq translates beautifully into sat pant the true path or sirat e mustaqim the straight way traced by god's finger for the eternal happiness of the humblest as of the greatest abraham jesus muhammad as molana sultan muhammad shah says in his memoirs on page 177 in ismaili belief the pure genius of the peers the equivalent in arabic is hujjat is also due to the fact that they are the highest personnel in the hudud ad-din or religious hierarchy after the imam and as such they received ta'id spiritual help from him as an ismaili poet says as dil e hujjat ba hazrat rabuad u ba ta'id e dilash agabuad from the heart of the hujjat to the imam there is a path the imam is always aware of sending taid to his heart this concept is also expressed in various ginans for example in the ginan bindrare one mahe sukh chare re gavantri peer sadardin recounts the story of a cow who is caught by a lion but succeeds in persuading him to let her go 
because her young calf is waiting to be fed. The lion agrees and the cow goes to feed her calf, who inquires why its mother is so preoccupied and worried. She tells the calf her reason for wanting to return quickly to fulfill her promise to the lion. The calf insists on accompanying the mother and faced with the lion, tells the lion to eat him first. The lion, impressed by the impeccable ethical behavior and the zest for sacrifice of the calf and the cow, asks, Who has instructed you thus? They replied, Etlire sudbud, chande suraje didi. That is, they had learned this lesson from the sun and the moon. Here in this Ginan, the sun stands for the Shah or the Imam, and the moon stands for the Hujjat or Peer, who receives the light of the sun of Imamat directly. This example also demonstrates how the sequence of words in various languages differs. In Arabic and Persian, it would be Shah followed by Peer, which is also correct conceptually. That is, sun and moon or Suraj and Echand. But in the Indian languages, it is contrary to this. In the Ismaili Jamaat, we are also familiar with the phrase Mata Anepita in the translations. Whereas in the English communications of the Imam to the Jamaat, the sequence is paternal and maternal. Interestingly, the Quran in Surah Kiyama, Surah 75, verse 9, it says, and the sun and the moon are united. Whereas the exoteric people await the uniting or joining of the physical sun and moon, which is impossible because the sun's extreme temperatures would simply consume the moon if by any cataclysm it were to go near the sun, in the esoteric Ismaili Tarika, in the light of what has been mentioned earlier, it can be interpreted as a joining of the institution of Piratan with the institution of Imamat in the time of Maulana Sultan Muhammad Shah, Salvatullahi Alayhi. Subsequently, the Imam gave the status of Pir only posthumously to his loyal murids, such as Pir Sabzali. The topic of this paper, the Holy Quran in the Ginanic literature, was inspired by the farmans of Maulana Sultan Muhammad Shah, as well as the resonance of both the Quran and the Ginans in my personal practice of faith over the last three decades. There are some amazing insights in the 48th Imam's farmans regarding the relationship of the Quran and the Ginans. On 5th July 1899 at Zanzibar, he said, Pir Sadruddin has composed for you Ginans by extracting the essence of the Quran and stating it in the language of Hindustan. On the 13th of July 1899, he said, Pir Sadruddin did not show you the path of the Hakikati religion all at once. First, he explained the counsels of the Hindu faith and subsequently he conflated the path of the Satpanth with it because of which this religion spread. In the same Farman, he also said, Do you know which city Pir Sadruddin came from? You will know if you read his history. You were Hindus. Pir Sadruddin composed Ginans from the exegesis of the Quran e Sharif for you. And again, were there among you such faithful people who had studied the Quran e Sharif and who are also familiar with the Ginans? I would have shown them each verse of the Ginans in the Quran, which they could reiterate to you. But there is no such person. This brings us to the point of discussing some highly instructive affinity in the verses of the Holy Quran and the Ginans. In the Ginan, Dura Deshati Ayo Vanjaro, Pirsadruddin states, Eji Sute Bete Bhai Rahachalanteji Nama Sahibaji Ko Lijiye. 
sleeping, sitting, or brother, or working, walking along the way, take the name of the Imam. In his composition, Pir Hasan Kabidin says, Eji khadiya, padiya, letiya, betya, mede bhaiwe, haradam sami rajo sambariye. O my brother, standing or lying down, reclining or sitting, remember Mullah all the time. Let us look at the Quranic verses, chapter 3 or Surah Ali Imran, verses 190 and 191, which read, the men of intellect are those who remember Allah standing, sitting, and reclining. The similarity in the words is obvious. Perhaps what is not so obvious is the fact that the emphasis of the, after the declaration of Qiyamat at al was on the esoteric practice of the faith, one pillar of which was to encourage followers to be da'imu zikr, that is, to remember God constantly. This is a recurring theme of the Ginans, and many will instantly recall Imam Begum's Har Dam Zikr Karna and Har Dam Jampo Peer Shah Nujab Japanta Rahyen. Another theme is in the Ginan of Sayyid Imam Shah. Uth Bethare Kiya Sota Tera sona bhalera nahi, tera shapir kadina sove, tujhe sona kyu bhave? Tera mola kadina sove, tujhe sona kyu bhave? Which means, get up and sit in meditation, in bandhi or ibadat. Why do you sleep? Sleeping is not beneficial. Your shapir never sleep. So why does sleeping please you? Your mola never sleeps. So why does sleeping please you? This immediately reminds us of the Ayatul Kursi, which is universally known as the greatest of the Qur'an's verses. That is, it is the A'zamul Ayat, which runs as follows, Allahu la ilaha illahu al-hayyul qayyum la ta'kuzuhu sinatun wa la naw, which means, Allah, there is no God save him. He is the ever-living, the everlasting, neither slumber nor sleep overtake him. This is Surah 2, Ayah 255. The key word kursi, which translates as pedestal, and in Ismaili ta'wil symbolizes the universal soul, is in the above verse. The Quranic word Arsh, which translates as a throne, symbolizing the universal intellect, is mentioned 22 times in the Holy Quran. These purely Arabic words, filled with esoteric meanings, appear in the Ginan of Pir Sadruddin entitled Sakhi Mahapadakeri Vatake Koi Kajanere, where Vernacularizing these two words, he says, Sakhi aras kurasna kot ke joya nirkire, eva sapt dip navkhan ke joya parkire. Friend, I beheld the place of the lofty throne and the pedestal. I recognized the seven islands and the nine continents. Another theme is the falsity and temporality of this world, both in the Ginans and the Quran. Prisadruddin says, Jutire dunya tame kai bulo. This world is false, a delusion. Do not forget. Sayyid Muhammad Shah describes the limited nature of this world and says, Ugamiya sohi din atamiya, hare fulia sohi karmai, Chuniya mandi dhadi pade, ha janamya sohi marjai. The day which dawns will end. The blossoming flower will wither. The buildings will crumble. And everyone who is born will one day die. This is mirrored in the Quran in Surah Hadid, Surah 57, Ayat 20. 
Know you all that the life of this world is but play and amusement, pomp and mutual boasting and multiplying among yourselves riches and children. Here is a similitude. How rain and the growth which it brings forth delight the hearts of the tillers. Soon it withers. You will see it grow yellow. Then it becomes dry and crumbles away. But in the hereafter is a penalty severe for the devotees of wrong and forgiveness from God and his good pleasure for the devotees of God. And what is the light of this world? What is the life of this world? But goods and chattels of deception. In the Ginan, Jirewala Satagura Sathe Gothadi Kije, Pisadruddin uses the refrain, Rewala Aj Hari Mare Angane Avya, Sathe Anant Karor Dev Lavya, Chaud Loke Vadhavya. Ali has come to my threshold, accompanied by countless elevated souls. The Holy Quran's equivalent is in Surah 89, Ayah 22, Vajaa Rabbuka wal Malaku Safan Safa, and your Lord shall come with angels rank upon rank. Similarly, in Pir Hasan Kabirdin's Ginan, Kalapata Jalapat Maya e Mohi, the refrain runs, So Allah guna tera, Pia guna tera, Saheb guna tera, Yasha avaguna bahot hamara, Sab gune bande ke fazal karo mora saheb. O Allah, O beloved, O Maula, all praise is due to you. My faults are innumerable, my sins many. O Lord, have mercy. Let us juxtapose this with the cry of Hazrat Dunun, better known as Hazrat Yunus, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minazalimin. There is no God but you who is free from all attributes. Indeed, I am among the wrongdoers. This is Surah 21, Ayat 87. The Quran is mentioned by its name in several Ginans. One important reference is Pir Sadruddin's Eji Allah Ek Khasam Sabuka, in which verse 2 reads, Eji Nabi Muhammad Bujo Bhai Totame Pamo Imam Mushrik Manto Kafar Kahye Momanadil Quran. This resonates in the Quran as but it is clear revelations in the hearts of those who have been given knowledge and none deny our revelations save the wrongdoers. Surah 29, verse 49. An extremely interesting example of the affinity of the Quran with the contents of Ginans is to be found in Pir Shamsh Ghazi's Ginan, Ekatirath Vendana. In verse 5 he says, Esa dar me de saheb raje da send da sui de daf vich hasti mavana vira mavana. My Lord Mola's door is as if the elephant passes through the eye of the needle. Here the peer uses the common animal of India, the huge elephant, passing through the needle's eye to demonstrate how hard it is to follow the satpanth. This is no doubt an allusion to the Quranic verse 40 in Surah 7, where it states, Lo, those who deny our revelations and scorn them, for them the gates of heaven will not be open, nor will they enter the garden, until the camel goes through the needle's eye. Remaining with the theme of animals, in Man Samjamni, edification of the self, it is stated, the great Pandit reads everything, just like an ass carrying a load of fragrant sandalwood. What can he know of the precious cargo hoisted upon him? In the same vein, 
the Holy Quran in Surah 62, Ayat 5, God says, The likeness of those who are entrusted with the law of Moses, yet apply it not, is as the likeness of the ass carrying books. All the examples I have cited so far show that many themes and teachings of the Quran, if not exactly copied word for word, are reflected in the content of the Ginans. However, there is scarcely any mention of the Sharia practices of Islam, such as Salat, Som, Hajj, etc. Where the Persian equivalents Namaz and Rosa are used, they are very much in the esoteric sense of inner purification and prayer. For example, in the Ginan of Pishams, he says, Manna mera musalla, Allah mera kazi, Kaya meri masita, Eji andar bet me namaz gujaru, Murakhman kya jane ta'at hamari. My heart is my prayer carpet. Allah is my judge. My body is my mosque. I sit and perform my namaz inside. How can the ignorant understand my ta'at or obedience? Similarly, in Man Samjani, Pishamsh describes the rosa or fasting of all the organs of the body, starting with the head, the eyes, nose, mouth, tongue, ears, heart, soul, hands and feet. He says, Thus roja je dhare bai, teche momanavira re bai. Whoever achieves the ten fasts, he or she is the valiant, courageous mu'min. It is important to point out that during the Alamoth period of Ismaili history, the most significant event of Eid al Qiyamah transformed the religious practices of the Ismailis who have always been called the Batiniyun or esotericists. The Ismaili Da'awat emphasized its esoteric or ta'wili form after the declaration of the Qiyamati teachings by Imam Hassan Allah Zikri his salam in, uh, who was our Imam uh, around the 12th century. Comparing the difference between the two periods of Tanzil or Sharia and Ta'wil or Qiyamat, Nasiruddin Tusi says that in the former period, obedience is performed within the confines of set timings and worship is immersed in fixed timings. Whereas in the latter time, that is in Qiyamat, obedience is performed with the removal of the fixed timings and the entire time is immersed in a state of obedience or ibadat. This difference in the nature of worship and obedience is clearly explained by Imam al mustansir Billah al husseini the second in his Faramin. He says, The whole year you must fast, just as the Zahiris fast one month. The meaning of this fast is riyazat, spiritual exercise. Watch yourselves, keep yourself away from bad qualities, evil and indecent actions and devilish acts so that the mirror of your hearts may be gradually polished. Also know that in those 30 days during which the Zahir is fast, the Eid is only for one day. They fast 30 days in order to attain that one day, and that again is a symbol. Just as they fast 30 days in order to attain one day, so you must undergo the entire life of difficulties, pain, have patience, do riyazat, and keep fasting internally in order to attain the beatific vision, lika, dida, of your Lord. This is a quotation from uh, Bolana Mustan Sirbila's Pandyate Jawan Mardi, page 96 in English. The Imam then explains the ta'wili or esoteric fasting. He says, the fast of the head means to treat one's own head as the feet of the people. 
casting out from one's head the desire for superiority, greatness, and pride, because these attributes befit only God, who is everlasting and the master of the kingdom. The fasting of the eye is that he must not cast covetous looks at women who are not lawful to him. The fasting of the ear is that he should abstain from listening to slander, gossip. The fasting of the tongue is to avoid uttering abuse or slander. The fasting of the heart is to keep it free from doubt. The fasting of the foot is to hold it back from wrong steps. Fasting of the hand is to keep it away from treachery. Thus, a mormon should keep all his body parts in a state of fasting so that he may not be a wrongdoer or zalim. Another very significant characteristic of the post Alamoth period, as pointed out in Dr. Steigerwald's paper, was the emphasis on the role of the Imam and particularly as explained by Sayyidna Nasiruddin Tusi in his Rosa to Taslim, Paradise of Submission, the Uluhiyat or the divinity of the Imam. This message runs throughout the Ginani corpus, and in one Ginan, Pir Sadruddin warns the believers. He says, Eji ek fikar munivara tamari che amane, Manas rupe sahib jano ho bhaiji. We have one concern about you, moments that you will know sahib as a human being. Such a discussion of the humanity of the Prophet is also clear in the Quran, where the disbelievers challenged his human attributes of eating and walking about the markets. See Surah 25, Ayat 7 and 20. In Surah 18, Ayat 110, God commands the Prophet to respond and say, Qul innama ana basharum mislukum yuha ilayya. Say, I am only a mortal like you. My Lord sends me the wahi revelation. To draw to, together all the points covered so far, the Ginanic literature reflects both the Tanzili and the Ta'wili aspects of the Holy Quran. That is, both the Zahir and the Batin, or both the exoteric and the esoteric. The messages of the Quran are seamlessly woven into the vernacular forms of India and use the local idiom which are familiar to the people. The symbols and similes may be contextual to the environment of India, but the peers and Sayyids were very faithful to the message of the Shia Ismaili Tariqa. Maulana Sultan Muhammad Shah says in a farman dated 13th October 1903 at Ahmedabad, just as there are the teachings of Pir Sadruddin, in the same way, there are the meanings of the Masnavi, but it is in Farsi, therefore you should learn the meanings. Further, about the meaning of the Quran, Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi says in his Dewan, Mazi Quran Barguzidim Magzra Ustukhan Pishe Sagan Andaktin, which means, we, that is Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi, has extracted the kernel or essence of the Qur'an and he has thrown the bones to the dogs. To conclude this paper and quoting a Persian poet, Masnavi lil ma'a il ma'anavi hast Qur'an dar zaban e pahlavi that is, the Masnavi of Maulana Rumi is the Qur'an in Persian. It would not be inappropriate if we say that the Ginans are the Qur'an in the Indian languages. In fact, we can look forward to such esoteric poetry within the Ismaili global Jamaat 
in languages such as Burshevsky, Quar, etc. One very final word is that we often hear members of the Indian subcontinent Jamaat say that since the essence of the Quran is included in the Ginans, it dispenses them of learning the final revelation to humankind, the Quran. Such a statement does not hold in the present globalized, pluralistic world where we do need to know the Quran in its original language as well as in translation, both to communicate with the general ummah as well as demonstrate the true principles of pluralism by sharing a common heritage of the diverse groups in the Ismaili Jamaat. Moreover, if we are today living in a knowledge society and we have access to all sorts of technology to help us to learn, we should take every opportunity to learn the foundational book of the faith of Islam, which, as demonstrated in this article, will only help the Jamaat of the Indo-Pak background to appreciate the Ginanic literature even more.